Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I want to share the latest updates on the widespread catastrophic damage Hurricane Helene has caused to the western part of our state, bringing historic rainfall and flooding, and how we are working together to help everyone get through this crisis. Yesterday, we received word from Washington that President Biden approved my expedited request declaring a major disaster for 25 North Carolina counties and the eastern band of the Cherokees. This declaration will immediately pave the way for public assistance to help our hard-hit local governments, as well as provide much-needed relief to our residents through the individual assistance program, and people are already signing up. We'll announce more information about this federal aid a little bit later. Depending on where you are, this unprecedented storm dropped from 10 to 29 inches of rain across the mountains, causing life-threatening floods and landslides. Unfortunately, 11 people in our state have died as a result of this storm, and tragically, we know there will be more. Our prayers and condolences go out to those families in this terrible time. Even as the rain and the winds have subsided, the challenge for people there increases. People are desperate for help, and we are pushing to get it to them, a massive effort. Many people are cut off because roads are impassable. They don't have power or communications. Please know that we are sending resources and coordinating closely with local governments, first responders, state and federal partners, and volunteer organizations to help those impacted by this tragic storm. Because it's so difficult to get trucks in by land, yesterday we began airlifting supplies, including food and water, into the region. A number of mass feeding sites have been open. Water, food, and other supplies are coming into Asheville, and they're also being airlifted from there to surrounding counties. A 20-bed state medical support center is opening in Caldwell County today, and we will be setting up more. Search and rescue teams, including 19 teams from other states and three federal teams, have rescued hundreds of people, including more than 100 rescued by the North Carolina National Guard. Nearly 464,000 customers remain without power, down from a peak, though, of more than a million. The North Carolina Department of Transportation is getting food and water supply trucks, power and cell phone utility trucks, and other vehicles through the damaged roads and into western North Carolina. More than 500 North Carolina National Guard members are now working alongside local emergency responders, conducting search and rescue missions, delivering needed supplies, and working to restore infrastructure. Cell phone providers are working to fix the damage and get stopgap solutions in place, and rapid progress is being made. Restoring communications is critical to saving lives, finding out where people are, and getting in supplies. And I've been in constant contact with cell phone companies, urging action and offering them support. Well over 1,000 people have taken refuge, taken refuge in 24 shelters. People who need help finding shelter or other resources should call 211 or visit readync.gov. We've seen how during this hurricane, how successful our 911 backup systems have worked. As 911 calls are now being handled by counties not affected by the storm. I want to remind people to avoid calling 911, though, with non-emergency questions. More than 1,600 North Carolina Department of Transportation employees and contract crews are working to clear roads and get them open again. But travel in western North Carolina remains limited and dangerous. 280 state-maintained roads are closed, including parts of Interstate 40 and Interstate 26. Please stay off western North Carolina roads so that emergency responders, responders, utility crews, and desperately needed supplies can get through. We don't need people visiting western North Carolina viewing the damage. 
The state emergency response team is working around the clock, and we are grateful for our local, state, and federal partners who are helping North Carolina in this time of need. We're seeing progress, but we know the need is great. Helene's impacts will continue, and people will continue to need our help. North Carolina is strong, and our first responders are the best in the country. I'm thankful for their hard work and for risking their lives to protect all North Carolinians. This is an unprecedented tragedy that requires an unprecedented response. We're hearing from many people who want to help, and we're grateful for that support. We're also activating the North Carolina Disaster Relief Fund, managed by the United Way of North Carolina. Later this afternoon, you'll be able to donate for, Hel for Helene Relief at nc.gov backslash donate. Today I'm joined by Emergency Management Director Will Ray, our North Carolina Department of Transportation Secretary Joey Hopkins, Major General Todd Hump Hunt, the Adjutant General of the North Carolina National Guard, Colonel Freddie Johnson, the Commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, and we've got Cody Kinsley, our Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, our American Sign Language interpreters are Brian Tipton and Karen Marion. Behind the scenes, our Spanish language interpreters are Jackie Mativier and Erica Kugler. We'll first hear from emergency management. Will? Thank you, Governor Cooper, and good, good afternoon. Western North Carolina has experienced catastrophic and devastating damages and the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team and our many partners continue to respond to the impacts and the need of our local jurisdictions. There are stories after stories of actions taken by our first responders to save lives and to overcome overwhelming situations. I want to remind all North Carolinians that conditions on the ground remain extremely dangerous even as flooding has, has continued. And, and it will continue to recede. Roadways are damaged. There are downed power lines and unstable ground. There are still many rain swollen rivers across the mountains and it may take some time for the flooding to fully dissipate. We ask people not to venture into storm affected areas, whether to check on property, loved ones, or just to sightsee. Besides endangering yourself, you could also be interfering with emergency responders or repair crews. Please let the professionals do their jobs. There are 31 county states of emergencies and 28 municipal states of emergency with 24 shelters open with over a thousand individuals being served. I wish to thank those working in our shelters to provide displaced North Carolinians with food, shelter, and access to critical resources. The work you are doing is vital to helping our residents. There are over 45 search and rescue teams engaged in the response from North Carolina and other states, such as Illinois, Indiana, Oklahoma, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Delaware, Michigan, Alabama, Connecticut, and Wisconsin, as well as federal search and rescue assets. We have over 730 brave responders in, in the search and rescue effort, in addition to the hundreds of local first responders. These teams are, are supported by over 200 personnel providing communications, logistics, and planning support. These response teams are working around the clock to make rescues, to access neighborhoods, to assist communications partners with access to infrastructure, and to conduct welfare checks. As of today, there have been hundreds of rescues made. If you need rescue or have an emergency, please call 911. For general disaster information, you can also visit ncdps.gov backslash Helene. First, to keep phone lines open. If it's not an emergency and you need to report someone missing or if you are requesting a welfare check, please call 211, select your preferred language, and then push option one. Thank you to the United Way and to the 211 operators who are working around the clock to process an unprecedented number of calls. 
The North Carolina National Guard is actively engaged and have deployed 556 guard, guardsmen and 195 vehicles for multiple missions, including high water vehicles to access communities, commodity delivery, and search and rescue. Our aviation assets are conduct, conducting search and rescue missions and facilitating the movement of commodities into the impacted communities. We would ask to allow for appropriate safety of aircraft. Individuals refrain from flying drones in the air. These could uh, impede public safety and uh, impede repair operations. The North Carolina Office of EMS is working with impacted counties to ensure that pre-hospital care and EMS systems are supported to provide life-saving emergency response. They've deployed ambulances, personnel, and are closely communicating with hospitals and licensed care facilities to ensure that fragile medical populations are moved to safe locations and cared for. There's been a federal public health emergency declared for North Carolina yesterday to assist in facilitating medical treatment within impacted communities and to remove barriers to quickly reestablishing sustained medical resources. North Carolina DHHS is also reminding North Carolinians in Western North Carolina that drinking water may not be safe to drink from, from municipal sources or well water. Flooding damages infrastructure and wells with contaminants. Only use bottled, boiled, or treated water for drinking, cooking, and personal hygiene in impacted areas. For more information, please visit your local health department's social media platforms or websites. Many people are understandably concerned about family or other loved ones that they cannot reach. There are still several areas where mobile and landline services remain degraded west of Interstate 77. I want to thank the telecommunications professionals that have been working around the clock to restore cell phone service and mobile data to the mountains. For those in Western North Carolina, we ask that you turn your phones off and turn them back on periodically to allow the phone to connect to a network. On Friday, our telecommunications partners activated disaster roaming on all networks. What this means is that any phone on any carrier can access any network to place calls. This is yet another, another example of the whole of community response across all sectors of government, the private sector, our nonprofits and volunteer agencies that are taking place. For those without phone service that can access the internet, you can activate Facebook crisis response on your profile to tell your contacts that you are okay. There are 280 roadways still closed and just over 500,000 power outages down from, as you heard from the governor, over a million. Restoration, restoration operations are underway with crews from other states converging on North Carolina to assist. And I want to remind everyone that carbon monoxide is a concern when you are cooking on a grill or operating a generator for power. Please make sure you do these things away from your home as carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless killer. Last night, North Carolina received a major disaster declaration for the 25 counties and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. That provides critical recovery resources, including individual assistance, which can assist impacted residents with funding for their immediate needs. Please continue to follow the North Carolina Emergency Management social media platforms and ncdps.gov backslash Helene as more information will be issued on recovery resources in the very near future. Residents can also call 1-800-621-3362 for individual assistance information. For those that have asked to volunteer, we appreciate your desire to help. You can visit NC voad.org backslash volunteer for more information. For general information, links to resources, and answers to frequently asked questions, please visit ncdps.gov backslash Helene. This website will continue to be updated with additional resources as we conclude response phase and move into the recovery phase. There are many North Carolinians who are tired, worried, and feeling the impacts of this significant event. To our friends and family in Western North Carolina, please know that all of North Carolina stands with you. We are stronger together and make for more resilient communities. Finally, I want to once again acknowledge those that have left their families and worked long hours in challenging conditions, responded to emergency calls for assistance, and have staffed emergency operations centers and incident command posts across the state to keep all North Carolinians safe. Thank you for what you do every day to protect the 10.8 million people that call this great state home. We are truly lucky to have such outstanding 
first responders and public safety professionals in North Carolina. Thank you. So we'll now hear from Todd Hunt, Major General, uh, Major General, uh, Adjutant General of the North Carolina National Guard. Thank you, Governor, and um, good afternoon. As was previously mentioned, the North Carolina National Guard has increased to over 500 soldiers and airmen and over 200 vehicles. Our main effort right now is to include aircraft uh, for the affected area. We have aircraft, aircraft that include hoists and emergency responders on them. And also our high water vehicles are being employed as we speak. As of this morning, our soldiers and airmen conducted numerous rescues in the western part of North Carolina, and a lot of those were air rescues. We've also moved soldiers from the central part of North Carolina into the western part of North Carolina as the roads prohibit us to do. Yesterday, we flew over 52 hours. We had 117 rescues, and of those, we rescued over 119 citizens of North Carolina to include 11 of their pets. Seven of these, of these rescues came within one area around the Chimney Rock area. <clears throat> North Carolina assets have identified people on the ground, are using social media, and emergency calls to locate, identify, and rescue those stranded citizens in Western North Carolina. We also rescued an infant and were able to take that infant directly to the hospital for care. The largest mission we saw in rescue was 41 people north of Asheville in Buncombe County. We've also moved over 34,000 commodities or pounds of commodities to include water, food, and medicine for distribution. In the past 48 hours, we've also um, augmented our personnel with 15 more aircraft. These are heavy lift aircraft, and they came out of the states of Connecticut, Maryland, Ohio, Iowa, Florida, South Carolina, and Pennsylvania. The North Carolina National Guard, in coordination with emergency management and first responders, are here until the mission is complete. In closing, I want to personally thank the guardians of our great state, the soldiers and citizens of North Carolina, and our first responders for their selfless service, risking their lives to protect others. I would also like to acknowledge the families of those previously mentioned, the employers and the universities of our soldier citizens, or our citizen soldiers, as they go out and help fellow North Carolinians. Um, thank you very much, Governor. <clears throat> we'll now have our Secretary of Transportation, uh, Mr. Hopkins, come forward, Joey Hopkins. Thank you, Governor. Our hearts go out to the people of Western North Carolina in the wake of the storm. And please know that we have DOT crews already in the area and they have begun operations. They're working hard to assess damages and also they're beginning emergency repairs. As of 11 a.m., it's already been mentioned, we had just about 280 roads closed in Western North Carolina. And all of those are attributed to Helene. The majority of those are in Henderson, Ash, Buncombe, Lincoln, Cleveland, Jackson, Transylvania, and Yancey counties. 52 of these are on primary routes, including two locations on I-40, one at mile marker three near the Tennessee line and the other near Old Fort. And there are dozens of other U.S. and N.C. routes closed. Many of the closures are due to high water where the roadway is impassable or flooded. We also have several land and rock slides, down power lines, pipe failures, and fallen trees. Some good news though, thanks to our staff's work, a previously closed section of I-26 south of Asheville has reopened, allowing our first major route into and out of the city. Crews have also opened up a path through the slide near Old Fort on I-40 to allow some stranded vehicles and also emergency responders to pass through with the assistance from the State Highway Patrol. We have more than 1,500 employees from all across our highway divisions responding to incidents related to the storm. This also includes more than 100 from Eastern and Central North Carolina. And we have others standing by as housing becomes available. Many of these employees have left their home 
homes. They have their own damage to their homes and property and even family. And so I want to thank them for the work they've been doing since this storm has hit. I want to also mention that unnecessary tra travel is hindering our crews from doing the work to get the roads reopened. Our main message is simple. Consider all roads in Western North Carolina to be closed until further notice. You can look for additional drive information and road closure details at drivenc.gov. And as our crews continue to respond to inc incidents, we will keep this website updated. I do want to say, though, it will take a long time to recover from the damages Helene left in its path. And we hope that everyone's patient with us as we work to evaluate the damage and also make repairs. The best thing you can do for us now is to stay home and we'll continue to keep you updated across all of our DOT social media platforms and our website. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Hopkins. We also have with us today our FEMA partners and our Secretary of the Department of Public Safety, Eddie Buffalo. We'll now take questions uh, from people, from reporters who have called in. Our first question is from Will Atwater with North Carolina Health News. Will Atwater, go ahead. Hi, um, I have a two-part question. The first part is, um, how many hospitals across the region are functioning and to what degree? Um, and then the second part is, um, how many public water systems are inoperable and um, how much water is being trucked or flown in and how long do you anticipate having to do so? First, we've made it a primary objective to get power back to hospitals and to make sure that they are operating I'm going to turn the answer to that question over to Secretary Cody Kinsley, Department of Health and Human Services. We also know that there is significant damage to water systems throughout Western North Carolina. There, there is a, a massive effort going on now to move water and other supplies into these affected areas because we know that they're going to be needed. But I'll first uh, ask Secretary Kinsley to come forward and then Director Ray. Secretary Kinsley. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Will, for that question. Uh, our team is in active contact with all of our healthcare facilities in Western North Carolina. And as of right now, all of our hospitals remain operating, albeit many of them on backup generator <laughs> power and temporary water supply. We'll continue to work with our partners here at Unified Command and Director Ray as we evaluate the situation and bring supplies to the hospitals to sustain their operations. Thanks, Will. So of the, uh, of the systems that we're currently tracking, 52 of them are without power. We have an additional 93 systems that are on a boil water advisory, and of those, 33 are awaiting uh, test results to clear that advisory. Um, we know that a combination of, of power, loss of power, um, is one contributing factor, but we also know that there's significant infrastructure damage from the amount of water that impacted a number of these communities that are going to have significant rebuild impacts uh, for these water systems to, to come online. We're working with our federal partners to look at uh, some official, official engineering evaluation, scoping some of those projects to determine uh, whether this is a simple repair that's going to be needed or whether we're talking an extensive overhaul of a, a of a jurisdiction's water system because those are significant lifts and and challenges um, we are we are preparing our operation to continue to move commodities into those impacted areas particularly food and water um, for an extended duration of time um, as you heard a number of folks reference today we are looking at multiple avenues to surge commodities into these impacted areas we know there are a number that are still that have incredibly limited or no access there are still people that are in desperate need of, of water and food for that reason we're looking at um, both ground transportation routes as they become more available while also utilizing uh, some of the air bridge that we have discussed today and, and previously using rotor wing aircraft we're also uh, discussing other major lift option um, major lift options of commodities into the impacted area with the goal being to sustain this for a period of time again as the governor and others have said this is a significant impact
impact and one that we are, I think, preparing to respond to for some time. Next question. Our next question is from Ray Gronberg with the North Carolina Tribune and Business North Carolina. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, more for Joey Hopkins than anything else. Uh, how are uh, you all going to you know, prioritize uh, the major road repairs such as uh, the one that mile marker three on I-40? We know that these transportation repairs are going to be significantly expensive uh, to do. We want to make sure that we're prioritizing main routes. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to make sure we get help to people and so there are temporary solutions being worked on, on to make sure we get trucks in but I'm going to turn that question over to Secretary Hopkins thank you governor thanks for the question Ray so in general we're going to prioritize the interstates and US and NC routes ahead of the secondary routes but also we've got to look at how much damage we have like the one you mentioned near the Tennessee line that's the significant amount of damage and so even though it's a top priority of ours it will take a long time to fix that we're probably talking months at best uh, we've still got to evaluate that and do some assessments out there before we can determine what that solution is but we're also in, in addition to those priorities we're also looking at communities that may be cut off and, and trying to find those neighborhoods and communities and get them access restored back so they can get back and and get the commodities and get the food that in water that they need to so that'll also be a priority as we continue to work our way through all the damage and find find these other areas next question our next question is from will michaels with wunc radio go ahead will uh thank you so much and good afternoon just one point of clarification and then a quick question if i might um the point of clarification is about the death toll and understanding Understanding that these numbers can change by the hour. Um, Buncombe County officials said this morning that they had confirmed 10 deaths in Buncombe County alone. Does the number that you mentioned, Governor, 11 include those, those 10 deaths? Well, first, I'm not sure exactly what data that Buncombe County is, is using, but let me tell you this. I, I know that there are a lot of people who are concerned about relatives and friends that they cannot get in touch with, and it's one of the reasons we are pushing so hard to get communications back up because we know that a lot of these people are just simply out of communication and are okay. We're going to continue this effort to make sure that we rescue people. These swift water rescues are going on now as we speak. The confirmation process on deaths is, is, is long and complicated. You got to make sure you notify family members. Uh, I, I express my, my deepest sympathy to people who have, have lost family members and friends to this storm, but we'll work on getting that data uh, reported to the public, public as quickly as we can. Do you have another question? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. And, and this question is for General Hunt. I just wanted to see if I could get some more details about search and rescue operations, given that there have been some reports from small towns like Swannanoa, where the fire chief there says that entire neighborhoods are gone. Um, does the National Guard help with, you know, going into uh, neighborhoods like that where local uh, authorities know that there are issues? And then does the National Guard also help with security, given that, that there are reports of looting and arguments breaking out at gas stations in western North Carolina? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Um, so I'll answer the second question first. Yes, we, we have have heard reports of that, um, but you have to remember that the North Carolina, the state of North Carolina has a robust capability in law enforcement. So, you know, they will probably respond before the National Guard does. To answer your second question, our, our mission yesterday was search and rescue. Uh, we do have some, some indications through, like I mentioned previously before, on Facebook, social media, or just people who are able to get a cell phone call in. And we did go out and, and rescue those people. The one specifically you're talking about they were 41 people out of that neighborhood that we rescued when I mentioned Buncombe County um, but we, we are out flying today we were flying yesterday and if we see somebody that needs rescuing we have the capabilities with our aircraft and our whole 
hoist aircraft and medevac to, to rescue those individuals uh, just by flying through the area. Thank you. Next question. Our next question is from Ted Hetman with Reuters. Go ahead, Ted. Hi, all. Thank you for having the uh, call. I was wondering if you could give us an estimate of the total cost of the damage in the state and what your timeline is for things to be restored to some kind of normalcy. Well, first, as quickly as possible, we want to return things to normalcy, but we know that it's going to be a matter of time when you have communities that are cut off. Everyone is working as hard as we can first to save lives because there's still water rescues ha happening to get supplies into people to make sure we get communications back up and to get power back on to people and to repair roads so that we can get from one place to the next all of those things are important as soon as we are in a position that process of assessing damages will occur uh, we're also going to be getting help to individuals individual families through the individual assistance approved by this disaster uh, declaration that we just got. But we don't know that yet. That, that'll be something that we'll continue to assess and we will work to get things uh, to get things improved as quickly as possible. Next question. Our next question is from WRAL TV. Go ahead, WRAL. Hey, forgive me, guys. Uh, what if that was going to be my number or not? Um, it, my question is, is related to the, the distribution of that food, uh, the water, the supplies that's coming in. Uh, you know, it's, it's been mentioned that, you know, this is a massive operation, um, but we're still hearing from so many people here in Western North Carolina who, you, you know, who are waiting on that and who are looking for some kind of a specific timeline here. So can we say when uh, specifically for these communities they can expect to start receiving this water and start receiving this food? Well, first, it is happening now. These commodities are being delivered. Remember, there are a lot of places that we're having difficult even, even getting to and communicating with. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Will Ray to give you the specifics of what is happening to coordinate that effort. I think, as the governor said, there, we're dealing still with access issues into some communities. Um, that's the reason we are looking at ground options as well as options via air and why you see all the partners up here that you see really it takes all of these partners to be able to clear roads uh, to provide support uh, to physically lift to the, the the commodities in and people out and so that is an operation that started yesterday um, it started very early this morning in both in air and ground to get it into some of the areas we know that are that are critical right now that will go on uh, throughout the day today and, and as we've talked we are preparing to be able to do this for, for many, many days ahead so that North Carolinians have the support that they need. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to continue to work around the clock to make sure that Western North Carolina gets help. We thank everybody for their support and for their prayers. Thank you.